In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Our final ordination of 2020. <laughs> We've had several this year by God's grace, and so we're gathered in joy to celebrate, to prepare ourselves to enter the celebration. Let us first call to mind our sins and ask God for his healing and mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, Father of mercies, who placed your people under the singular protection of your Son's most holy Mother, grant that all who invoke the Blessed Virgin of Guadalupe may seek with ever more lively faith the progress of peoples in the ways of justice and of peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was open, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon 
with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the st stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth, to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Never have, now has salvation and power come in the kingdom of God and the authority of his anointed. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, Select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to the task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith in the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the numbers and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord.
let Harrison Garlick, who is to be ordained a deacon, come forward. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church ask you to ordain this man, our brother, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know him to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that he has been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and of our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose this man, our brother, for the order of the diaconate. Thanks be to God. I don't think we've ever done an ordination on the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe before. Probably never will again. The immediate message of the Virgin of Guadalupe was that a church should be built on the site of the apparition. <clears throat> and with this final ordination of the year of 2020 falling on the feast of Guadalupe, in the same week that we had for the diocese our first lay consecration of a virgin, we see God continuing to construct his house here in eastern Oklahoma. Harrison, you are here with your wife and your children and members of that larger family also of your parish and through the cameras even of the larger family of the diocese. These families have helped you through your years of formation and we offer them our gratitude. Today is a kind of harvest. The Holy Spirit plants the call to serve the church in holy orders in those who God chooses. The church nurtures and confirms these vocations and at the right moment, harvests them through ordination so they can begin their service in the building up of the house of God. This service was described very beautifully in the Second Vatican Council in its document, Lumen Gentium, in this way. At a lower level of the hierarchy are deacons upon whom hands are imposed not unto the priesthood but unto a ministry of service or strengthened by sacramental grace in communion with the bishop and his group of priests. They serve in the diaconate of the liturgy, of the word, and of charity to the people of God. It is the duty of the deacon to administer baptism solemnly, to be custodian and dispenser of the Eucharist, to assist at and bless marriages in the name of the church, to bring viaticum to the dying, to read the sacred scripture to the faithful, to instruct and exhort the people to preside over the worship and prayer of the faithful, to administer sacramentals, to officiate at funeral and burial services, dedicated to duties of charity and of administration. Let deacons be mindful of the admonition of blessed Polycarp. Be merciful, diligent, walking according to the truth of the Lord, who became the servant of all. In a couple of moments, Harrison, you must respond publicly to a series of questions 
to declare for yourself and for us what you are resolved to do by the Holy Spirit. And you must be resolved. It has been years since your baptism and confirmation when you first received the Holy Spirit. In your confirmation there was an imposition of hands to invoke the Holy Spirit, but not for ordination. The imposition of hands you receive today represents from the time of the apostles the church's choice of you and the special connection you have with me and with my successors. It will confer on you a gift of the Holy Spirit that will permit you to exercise a sacred power that can only come from Christ through his church. In your case as a deacon, the gift of the Holy Spirit that you will receive will conform you to the figure of Christ the servant. You can't do this by yourself. Both, you don't have permission to do it by yourself, the church is the one to call you, and also you don't have the ability. There is a line of thinking among some that the work of a deacon is like the work of a social worker. But a deacon is not a social worker. And the Holy Spirit will dwell in you and work through you in ways that the Holy Spirit does not work through a social worker by virtue of your ordination. As a deacon, you should serve the will of God, not your own. The will of God is to convert your life through your diaconate service. But the diaconate is not ordination to the priesthood, but to the ministry, to help the bishop and his priests to serve the people of God. As you announce your determination to serve us, be assured of our determination to pray to God who has begun this good work in you, that he will bring it to fruition. Dear son, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? I do. do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience as the apostle urges and to proclaim this faith in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? Do you resolve to maintain <clears throat> and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life? And in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you, to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world? I do. do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ? of whose body and blood you are a minister at the altar. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment.
My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on this his servant, whom in his kindness he raises to the sacred order of the diaconate. Let us kneel.
Truly accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing this man we present, for in our judgment we believe him worthy to exercise sacred ministries through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand. Draw near, we pray, Almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged but make all things new. In your eternal prov providence, you make provision for every age as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the Church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. And so, in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your son's apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on this servant of yours who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon him, Lord, we pray the Holy Spirit, that he may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the work of the ministry. May there abound in him every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in his conduct so that by the example of his way of life he may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a clear conscience, may he remain strong and steadfast in Christ so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to serve, but to be served, not to be served, but to serve, he may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
receive the gospel of Christ whose herald you have become, believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the gifts we present to you on this feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, and grant that this sacrifice may strengthen us to fulfill your commandments as true children of the Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. <clears throat> the Holy, Holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, the Son To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For then we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them. 
for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for your servant, whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of the diaconate, and in your mercy keep safe your gifts in him so that what he has received by divine commission he may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. In your death, O oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, 
and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who do sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Thias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Arcelanus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, to Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be
Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Lord God, may the body and blood of your Son, which we receive in this sacrament, reconcile us always in your love. And may we who rejoice in Our Lady of Guadalupe live united and at peace in this world until the day of the Lord dawns in glory. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated a moment. Due, the on, due to the ongoing pandemic, we will, we will not have a reception today for Deacon Harrison. However, he will be preaching at all the masses at Christ the King this weekend, and there will be a reception after the 1115 Mass at Christ the King tomorrow. You're all invited. Thank you. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who has called you to the service of others in his church, give you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor. Amen. Amen. May he who has entrusted you with preaching the gospel of Christ help you as you live according to his word to be its sincere and fervent witness. Amen. Amen. May he who has appointed you a steward of his mysteries make you an imitator of his Son, Jesus Christ, and a minister of unity and peace in the world. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord.